Hi, Josh here, and you're watching 610 Garage. Learn it, build it, teach it. I've got something very different for you today. I've been wanting to add lights to my aquarium that contains no fish for a while. I finally did it, and with individually addressable WS2812B LEDs to boot. But this required building an LED controller box and writing two programs to run the LED animations. By the way, don't question the no fish thing. Just accept it. The LEDs are housed in a metal lid. I made the lid out of some 22 gauge sheet metal. This lid sits on top of the aquarium. On the bottom of the lid, I have a piece of plexiglass. The LED strips are silicone to the inside of the plexiglass. I also squash silicone everywhere so that the moisture doesn't get in and ruin the LEDs. I have stereo speaker wire soldered to the LED strips. One wire goes to one strip. I probably could have just put the fade candy controller in the lid and ran data and power. But, um, I didn't, so. Powering the LEDs is the controller box. The box is just a junction box. On the outside, we can see the fan being covered by a 3D printed grill I designed and printed. We can also see 16 quarter inch stereo jacks. Each jack powers an LED strip with a maximum of 64 LEDs per strip. The stereo jack may be a bit undersized with regards to its power rating, but they have seemed to work just fine thus far. On the other side, we can see the exhaust vent, power, and network port. Let's look inside. There is a 60 amp power supply here. That is big enough to power 1,200 individual LEDs. I added mounting holes on the other side so that the case can handle two power supplies if I need them. Controlling the LEDs are two Fade Candy LED controllers. The Raspberry Pi here talks to the Fade Candies and tells them what to set the each pixel to. While it may be possible to control the LEDs with just the Pi, the dedicated hardware works better and faster than the Pi alone. We can also see two fuses here. They fuse one of the two LED jack backs. I was rushed to get this done so that I could use it at a fair booth for work. So I accidentally neglected to add fuses to the other bank. I'll fix that sooner or later. Controlling the LEDs is fairly easy. There is a fade candy library for processing. Processing being a programming language and an integrated development package that is geared for the sweet, sweet visuals. We have the animator program running on a computer. This computer is networked to the Pi. The animator program tells the Pi what to set the LEDs to over the local network. The Pi takes this information and forwards it to the appropriate Fade Candy controller. The Fade Candy controller then pumps that data out to the LEDs. There are many reasons why you may not want to run the animator program on the Pi. One is horsepower. If you're running a complex animator program, say capturing live video, you'll need a beefy computer, and this may not be located near the lights. Or you could be like me. I have this LED controller box, which controls my aquarium and will control other lights on my desk. I will also have a fake candy controller to control the lights in my server rack. And I may add more somewhere down the line. So having one interface to control all my LEDs makes my life way simpler and gives me more flexibility. My problem is that I want to run the animator program on a virtual machine running on my virtual machine server. To render the graphics, I need a graphics card, something I don't have on my virtual machine server. The solution is rather simple. Frankly, it took me way too long to come up with it. I wrote an encoder program. This program takes a video preferably a video that can loop. It then runs the video and the Fade Candy library. As the video is played, the LEDs are animated. I hijacked one of the functions in the Fade Candy library, specifically the one that reads the LED data and buttons it up into a nice package to be sent to the Raspberry Pi. While it reads the LED data, I copy this data and save it to a file. I do this per frame. Each frame, I'm saving the LED data to a new line in the same file so that each line is an LED frame. The encoder program ends when the video is finished. I am left with a file that contains my LED data. 
I copy this data over so that my animator program can read it. It reads the file and loads the data in a RAM. It then reads this data line by line, packages it up, and transmits the package to the Pi. The animator program then loops through this data and it creates an endless animation on my LEDs without the processing power required to loop through a video. All of this is still really rough, and knowing me, it's going to stay that way. My end goal is to have a program on my virtual machine that will allow me to select a file so that I can quickly and easily change all of my LED animations. And this program will be written in C instead of processing for efficiency. Chances are, I will never get to that. But if you want to take a crack at it, all of my code is on GitHub. So have at it. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. I know it's a lot different from my normal work, but let me know what you think. Maybe I'll do more in the electronics and programming area. If you don't like it, don't fret. My next video will be about making shackles for my Jeep. But of course, if you don't like this video, you're probably not watching it. Which would make that last statement quite useless.